In this video, we're gonna talk about five watches at five price points that you can buy if you just wanted to quit the game. There are some watches that complement a collection and some that kill it. What do I mean? Take the Omega Aquaterra, for example. I hate this watch. I hate that it exists because it's too good. I was worried about getting one because I knew if I did, I might wear it all the time and neglect my other watches. But sometimes you just wanna get up in the morning and not have to worry about which watch to put on your wrist. So what if you want that one watch that can do everything? Well, we'll cover the Aquaterra in the second half of the video, but let's start with some more budget options. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. Are you tired of the vitriol on the forums? Are you over the superficial chatter on Watch IG? Well, check out the new Watch Crunch app. We built it so that we can have better watch discussions. Coming in at the six to $700 level, we have none other than the Seiko Alpinist. The Alpinist is decades old and comes in many forms, but they just keep releasing new bangers. I like the new GMT and the new rock face is a real looker. But here I went with the nostalgia play on the classic green dial in the SPB 210. This one features a gold PVD case, which allows the dial furniture to match its surroundings. But what makes a good all around watch? Well, first it has to have a screw down crown, in this case, giving it 200 meters of water resistance so you don't have to think too much about getting it wet. Next, it has to have a wrist friendly size. The Alpinus is 39 millimeters by 13 millimeters thick. And even the strap that Seiko ships is a supple calf leather on a matching deployant. Am I praising a Seiko strap? You bet your ass, and yes, I am as shocked as you. Now, a well-deserved contender at this price point might be the Hamilton Murph or anything from the khaki line, but I'd say the Alpinist has like the je ne sais quoi, the X factor compared to the Hammy in the form of a secondary crown, which operates a compass bezel. Yeah, you might say it's a little bit gimmicky, but it harkens back to nearly a century of Japanese mountaineering tradition. But for a sub thousand dollar watch that will equally survive a trip to the grocery store as the zombie apocalypse, the Alpinist has got your back. Coming in at just above a thousand dollars, we have the Zin 556, a modern German take on the aviation watch. The Zen is no nonsense, coming from a company with a strong history in space flight. Now, I'll admit that a stern matte black dial with printed markers, this watch is a little too German for my taste. So I sprang for the RS version with a contrasting red second hand for a pop of color. The case and bracelet are all completely brushed, so you'll have to look elsewhere if you want a little more bling. But at a wrist-friendly 38 and millimeters and only 11 millimeters thin, thanks to a flat sapphire crystal, the Zen will be sure to make itself scarce when you're not trying to show it off. So what do we get over the Seiko when paying nearly double the price? Well, turning the watch over, we see a decorated Swiss Salita SW200 movement that is said to be high grade. And this means it's gonna have much better accuracy. And it's also the reason that the case can stay so slim. So get the Zen if you want to spend the minimum amount of money to check off the most number of boxes. For just over 2000, I present to you the Longing Spirit. This one with the iridescent blue dial that wows me every time I see it. Longing dominates at this price tier with their many aviation inspired timepieces, but of all of them, the Spirit 37 really stood out to me. Yes, on paper, 37 is just on the small side for a sports watch, but the case has long lugs, giving it plenty of wrist presence. The dial has applied markers and plenty of intricate details to communicate to your eye that this is a luxury piece. Longing went the extra mile by equipping the Spirit with a chronometer grade ETA with 72 hours of power reserve. But what exactly do we get as an upgrade over the Zen? Well, we have to talk about finishing, and this is a point that's a little bit hard to communicate just through a YouTube video. You have to hold these things in the hand to appreciate it, but the Longine is a big step up in terms of fit and finish. The gaps are tight, the edges are sharp, and the surfaces contrast well, and even the bracelet, it's supple and free of wiggles and jiggles. Longine is up there with IWC in regards to the history of pilot's watches, and with the Spirit, we're really starting to get into that luxury level of finishing. So if you're ready to fly into the sunset, leave the hobby behind, choose the Longing Spirit as your wingman. Now, let's say you want a do-it-all watch at the $3,000 level. 
I don't want to beat a dead horse, but get a tutor and call it a day. Which one? Well, there are plenty of more enthusiast models to choose from. For example, if you want that military heritage, get an FXD. If you want a more vintage-y choice, get a BB-54 for the 37 millimeter sweetness. But if you just want that quintessential tutor, then look into a lightly used Black Bay 58. Why is the 58 still on top of the heap after like half a decade? Well, because it nails the fundamentals. The 58 wears like a vintage sub at 39 by 12, but still has enough wrist presence. And it has pops of color on the dial and the bezel to keep things interesting without being distracting. The movement is the in-house COSC certified MT5400 from Kinesi that boasts a 70 hour power reserve. And being a diver, it's hydrophilic, again, with 200 meters of water resistance. And finally, it's got Rolex level finishing that carries through a stellar bracelet and the clasp. Whether paired with a tuxedo or joggers on an evening stroll, you can happily retire from the game with the 58. Now, before we get to the star of the show, do me a favor, guys, drop a like for this video. And if you like these compilation videos, make sure you're subscribed because I got more cooking. Finally, we have the Omega Aquaterra. They have made so many variants of this watch, you can easily find one in steel for you know, around $4,000. Yes, some say that the Rolex Explorer is the better choice here, and I love that they did the new one in 40 mil because the 36 was always a little bit dainty for me, but I'd argue that the AT is just as good technically and twice as interesting. And what I have here is the newer 38 millimeter version, and it's, it's too good. I mean, look at the naming. Aqua being water and Terra being land. So Omega really covered their bases here. You want a watch to go sailing with? The dial features horizontal slats, reminiscent of a teak deck of a yacht, with a blue sunburst finish that is every bit as eye-catching as a Patek Philippe Nautilus. You want a dress watch for the office? Well, the sharply cut triangular hour markers are not too intrusive, and you have a date inconspicuously tucked at the six. The case also strikes a perfect balance between sporty and restrained at only 12 and a half millimeters thick and sporting Omega's famous liar lugs. The 38 millimeter Aquaterra gets the coaxial caliber 8800, a technically proficient engine with Metos accuracy and 55 hours of power, but its bigger 41 millimeter brother gets the 8900. And this is one of the things that I have a little bit of issue with because the 8900 gets the jump hour function. And I doubt it's the size that prevents them from putting it into the 38 mil. And the other thing is that traditionally bracelets have never been a forte of Omega's. In this case, it's nothing to write home about a standard issue oyster that terminates in a double deployant. But you have two options here if you don't like this bracelet. Either get Omega's Stellar Rubber Strap, which has that basket weave pattern, which really accentuates the sporty nature of this watch, or you can source the more modern bracelet from the newer, colorful Aquaterra 38s. Just be warned, if you buy the Aquaterra, you might not want to wear any other watch from your collection again. Now, if money wasn't a factor, I suggest looking at the new IWC Ingenieur, which is just about perfect for everyday wear. From the design to the history, the movement, the finishing, there's really no shortcomings here. You know, some days I wake up and I wish that I wasn't bitten by this watch bug and that I can just grab one of the watches on this list and go do other fun things in my life, like laser tag. Well, what if you're not ready to quit the game and you want the ultimate dress watch? Well, you should probably look into a King or Grand Seiko, but what if you don't want to pay three to $10,000? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to score a King or Grand Seiko for less than a thousand. Check it out. <laughs> 